think filmmakers are some of the most important people in the world. And I think our ability to tell stories and empower people and bring emotion and you know, cause people to relate to stories and find understandings in movies is just so important. I mean, I think like, I just can't say enough about the dreams that you guys create. So that's what we're gonna be talking about. How do you take this dream and make it real? And how do you take that dream and jump it into the big leagues, right? Here's just a couple examples of a few movies. Now, what I wanna start with is like, what is your actual end product in making a movie? Anyone have an idea? What's your actual end product when you're making a film? To be profitable. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. That's good. That's good. Oh, okay. That was, okay. Yes. You want to not just make the film, but you want to show the film. You want to share it with audiences. You want to connect. You want to win awards. And you want to get that film distributed, right? So that's actually your goal, not just to make a dream, but to make a dream profitable and to make that film effective and travel around the world and get distribution. So we really need to work backwards. What kind of film is going to get distributed? Okay. Has anyone here been to Cannes or any other meaningful film market in the world? Okay. Excellent. Good. So this is what it's like when you walk into Cannes, right? It's just rows and rows and endless walkways and just so many different buyers there and distributors and sales agents and things like that. So out of those hundreds of people, why don't you just ask yourself, how am I going to stand out in that kind of marketplace? How am I going to interest these people in my film, right? Does that make sense? You get that point of view? Does that make sense? Like we have to stand out. We have to get their attention. We have to make something that people want. We have to create want. We have to create a desire for your story. So whenever I'm starting to write a script, I have those things in mind at the forefront of my mind as I'm getting going. So these to me are examples of like brick was made for 600,000, Napoleon Dynamite for like two or 300,000 or 400,000, Super Size Me probably $150,000. Um, all these films ended up in the movie, movie theater and these films became hits. I mean, they changed the culture in some way. Ryan Johnson went on to direct all kinds of crazy things because of Brick, and he raised this money through family and friends. So did anyone see American Fiction? You guys like it? Twice. Twice? Yeah, it's good, right? It's really good because we have to create a buzzworthy concept, you guys. That's number one. Our first speaker did that really brilliantly. But how do we know that a concept is actually buzzworthy? Anybody, any, any feedback on how do we know we have a good concept? You've got a big actor who's attached to it. <laughs> okay, all right, cool. Anybody else buzzworthy? How do, we, how do we know we have something good? It speaks socially. It speaks socially? Okay, right on. Unique. Unique, good. Anyone else? Reviews. Reviews, yes. This is mainly what I wanted to talk to you guys about. You start to tell someone your idea, and they're like, damn, that's good. That's interesting. What about this? What happens in this part of the movie? Did you ever consider this? If people start talking about your concept when you pitch it to them, that's a damn good sign. That's a buzzworthy sign. That's going, people are going into word of mouth. What do I mean by word of mouth? By word of mouth, I mean when you go see a movie like American Fiction, you're like, mom, you've got to go see American Fiction. You've got to check this film out. Someone just went into word of mouth, which is the best kind of marketing. That means that people are talking about this thing, they're sharing it with their friends, right? So if you have a concept that you know that people are going into word of mouth on, meaning they're talking about it, they're telling their friends about it, they're asking you questions, and they're interested, that's a damn good sign. If you're like, okay, it's a story about two women and their very interesting internal struggles, and they meet and they play chess. Okay, that is not high concept, right? That's not high concept. You know, these kinds of, this guy's gonna go for 30 days eating McDonald's for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and see what happens to him. That's pretty high concept, right? That's pretty good, all right? This American fiction, the high concept, it's very high concept. It's a, it's a relatively small film, but it's like about a guy who's frustrated with the representation of African-American writers, and he's gonna write a novel that kind of makes fun and satirizes the whole industry under a pseudonym and it takes off, right? That's pretty damn high concept and good. That's pretty interesting. So number one, I want you guys to just pay attention when you pitch your projects that they have word of mouth, okay? Now, a friend of mine, a very important mentor of mine, he worked as a key executive in Tom Cruise's company, right? 
And obviously, Tom is getting the, working with the best filmmakers in the world, working on the best scripts out there. The, all these scripts are coming to him, right? And guess what question they asked themselves on every single project in Tom Cruise's company when the script came in? No matter how damn good that script was, what was the question that they asked? Will Tom love it? OK, interesting, interesting. Anybody else? What did Tom, what did Tom want to know? OK, interesting, interesting. OK, so what Tom wanted to know is how are we going to sell this film? How are we going to sell this film? Does that make sense? Because yes. think about it. We started this talk off with our end product. Our end product is that we've got to distribute this movie. We've got to share this film around the world. We've got to win awards. This thing's got to go all over the place, right? So if we, can't, if we don't know how we're going to sell this film, that's a huge hole. That's a massive hole. OK, so now. I remember in New York in the early 90s, I was walking around the village, and I went to NYU Film School, and I'm walking around New York, and someone is stamping pie all over the place, this symbol. I'm like, what the hell is this? What is this? And so it created curiosity, and it created interest. And this is Darren Aronofsky. He's brilliant. This movie was made for like 50K or something, pie, 60K, something like that. He went around New York stamping pie. I mean, if that's not brilliant, like word of mouth, like people start to talk about it, it's really brilliant. So that's what Darren Aronofsky did. Um, so I'm talking like we have to have a different and unique director vision and something to really offer the marketplace, something that's a unique world and a unique vision that people want to be a part of. So I don't even mess with the project unless I really feel like I have this. Because is anyone married here? OK, anyone in a long-term relationship? OK, now the way to make those work is just like a movie. You've got to keep creating it. You've got to keep creating it over and over and over and keep breathing life into that thing. So if you don't have something that you want to live with for two to five years, don't start down that road. OK, you've got to really care about this thing. You've got to really be passionate. So we talked about going to the film market and all, like, you just have to stand out to these people. Now, some of the ways you can stand out, even if you have a low budget film, is having really strong talent. I know Stephen was talking about maybe just having a somewhat really recognizable name, which by the way is every distributor's needed and wanted. They want a recognizable name in their film, in your film. Okay, so maybe you have a small, um, you know, like two days with like a, a well-known celebrity or someone who's recognizable or on TV, et cetera, that helps you a lot with a small film, okay? As opposed to totally unknown actors, really strong trailers, really strong posters, really, really good influence. Now, what I mean by influence, maybe there's someone a part of your project, like I'm gonna show you a project that I'm putting together a presentation materials on that have a very key influential person with billions of views on his YouTube, okay? So these, like, for example, my trailer editor on some of even my short films, he edited like The Help. He edited the trailer for There Will Be Blood. He made my movie look like, I mean, my movie's great, but he made it look unbelievable, okay? So trailers, so important. Posters, so important. A friend of mine, um, the writer of my film, his, um, his uncle, um, Rory, he designed posters for like movies like Terminator. He did our poster. Do you think we got attention with a poster like that? It all goes back to like, we want to distribute our film. We want to get our film out in the world in a big way. Well, these are some of the ways that you're really gonna do that, okay? When it started with concept, talent, trailers, posters, influence, okay? This is just a quick example of a presentation material that a film I'm currently working on. Your goal with these things is to inspire the investor and your partners. If your pitch deck, this is a pitch deck example, if it doesn't inspire your investor or your partners, you're done. You're done, okay? You have to make them wanna be part of your project through what you're presenting to them. I'm just gonna click through here quickly. These are just some, does anyone have pitch decks for their projects? Okay, super cool. I use these things for marketing. This was one that we put together for uh, this is a film about extreme mountain biking, and it's about um, overcoming anxiety and depression, not through, um, through having a dream and a sport, as opposed to medicating yourself, okay? So here we go, just really quick. Um, you know, you have your log line, um, financing, production team, um, 
popularity of, in this case, extreme mountain biking. Um, you know, we have Fabio who's got, his film has 226 million views. Um, you know, just talking, like you want to, like, does anyone know who Grant Cardone is? Okay, he's a sales trainer. Oh, thank you, Jordan. My son's here over there, he's eight years old. He's learning to be a filmmaker. Um, so Grant Cardone says you gotta sell people on the benefits. The sell people on the benefits of working with you, okay? So, yes, we talk about um, who's involved in the project. Fabio, one of the most incredible, he's got 1 .1, over 1.1 billion views on YouTube. Um, you know, got sponsors all over the place. This is like the inspirational message of the film. It's about mental health. You know, seven in 10 teens experience struggles. It's talking about the feel-good hormones, uh, community excitement about extreme mountain biking, and we're comparing it. How do you introduce something that people don't know what the hell it is? You compare it to something they do know, right? So that's what we're doing in this case here, comparing it to other films that are similar to it, okay? Um, target audience, that means who are you making this movie for, right? You really, really need to know who you're making your film for. Right? It's not just film lovers. It's got to be something more specific than that. So in this case, we have a mountain biking audience, college students, um, mental health you know, related. Okay? And then we have like a distribution plan, you know, festivals, etc. I was able to get a letter of distribution for this film because a friend of mine is a sales agent. Um, okay? So that's very important in getting financing. Talk about the, the cast that you want. Uh, your distribution and sales consultant, if you can get that. A little bit about the directors. Um, we got another director on board who's worked for Red Bull and other stuff for the action stuff in this film. You know, again, you're just like selling the audience on the benefits of working with you. And every step of the way, you're building confidence, people's confidence, right? Like, you want to get, con get confidence from people. This is the benefits of sponsorship, in this case, working with um, you know, brands in this film. Part of the money is gonna, come is gonna come from brands in this film, part is gonna come from private financing. Um, okay, so there's different partnerships that you know, a brand could kick in on for this project and different benefits. So you see it's like anyone who is going to embrace the business side of filmmaking is doing the right thing because like filmmaking is an incredibly creative world, but I would say like it's like 80% business, you guys. And when you guys could just willing to accept that, man, it's fun. It's like I find that there's so much creativity in promoting a film just as much as there is in making a film if you really get creative about it. It's so much fun. Okay, so now this is like, we haven't even talked about production yet because I'm just like, we are going to map out how this film is going to be made, distributed, and marketed, right? I look at marketing as making something popular. So here, we're talking about the, the biking world is valued at $59.3 billion in 2021 and expected to reach $89 billion in 2000 2028. Even if we capture 3% of the market um, with a movie ticket averaging $5, we will earn, have earned $6 million, right? You just Step by step, increasing the audience's, the, the investors and the partners' uh, confidence in the project, okay? So we go into like the health world and we go into, you know, who's gonna be involved, health organizations, health professionals, um, you know, we're gonna do like a radio tour talking about anxiety and depression, you know, panels about anxiety and depression, um, working with these biking companies who do these massive festivals where they show their bikes we're gonna have an official bike of the film, like a t-shirt line. I mean, it's deep, you know? Talking about what festivals, what platforms are right for the film, um, you know, and what influencers we're gonna work with on the film and what is their social following. So it's not, it's a, it's not a big budget film, but like we're thinking through this thing and having done so many projects, I think that the more you think through your project, the more successful you will be. You're looking, at the end goal, and you're putting everything in line to reach that final goal that we started with, right guys? We said we wanted to get our film distributed. We said we wanted to share our film across the world. We wanted to make this film really known and win awards and be profitable. Well, you're laying the whole plan for how to do that, okay?
So uh, not only have I made films, but I've also produced projects for Michelle Pfeiffer, Mark Ruffalo, Coldplay, um, you know, Norman Reedus, on and on and on. And so I have to be really, really professional at what I do. And these are some of the things that, I, that are really important to me when I'm producing a project. Um, I don't hire anyone. If I'm in charge, I don't hire anyone that I don't meet first. OK? I don't care what their role is. I want to meet them at least on Zoom ahead of time. Because I feel like the whole reason behind my, my success is because I have an amazing team behind me. Like These people are positive, and they believe in the goals and dreams that we're working on together. Is that real to you guys? Yeah. Yeah. Having a solid team, right? OK, good. Is it also real to you that one person with a bad attitude can infect a whole bunch of people? Yes. Right? Yes. yes. So that's why I just go out of my way to meet with every single person. And my whole thing about this industry, you guys, is I believe that we are all capable of seeing through people in situations. When you meet someone and you kind of have like a feeling about them that isn't very good, like your antenna go up, you better listen to that. You better listen to that. You can get your ass whipped in this industry if you don't listen to your instincts. Okay? And it's really important to like ask yourself a couple questions. Number one, any person who steps on your project, ask yourself, number one, do I like this person? If you don't like them, there's a reason you don't like them. Do I trust this person? If you don't trust that person, there's a reason you don't trust them. Does this person do what they say they're going to do? Right? You guys ever run into that? Someone's like, yeah, I'm going to do this, 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 and they don't. Right? That's, that's not very fun. <laughs> and then the fourth one, has this, has this person successfully done what I'm asking them to do now? Right? OK. So my, another um, mentor of mine, Doug Claiborne, who produced and executive produced for Francis Ford Coppola, um, many, many, many incredible movies. I'm like, Doug, how'd you do it? He's like, I just worked with the best people I could possibly find. And I'm just like, Doug, yes. That's, that's what I've done. I've just like the best cinematographer, the best editor, the best composer. Everyone I could find that's the best, I put them together. OK? Um, now, when you're making a movie, especially if it's low budget, um, there's someone, has anyone worked with a line producer before? Yeah? Anyone else? Yes, 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 yes. OK, good. Yeah, line producer is someone who does a budget for a film. So someone who's a very skilled line producer is like the best person to have because they're going to like give you like a budget that's like going to be completely realistic. You know, it's not like you're like midway through the film and you like don't have enough for this and don't have enough for that and you got to start raising money in the middle of the film. Like they've thought through everything, right? They know, they've, they've been through the process so many times that they've taken into consideration all the different costs, okay? So, and when you have like a budget, it means that you also have a schedule, right? Because you have to figure out how long the film will take to shoot, um, and that's part of the budget. So if you have a correct schedule, no matter the size of the film, but especially on a small film, you will be successful because you'll have enough time to make your vision a reality. Does that make sense? I was sitting with a friend of mine, uh, Guzmano, and he's like been producing with Michael Mann for like since the beginning of Michael Mann's career. And we were watching Heat together. I brought him to Tarantino's theater, the New Beverly Cinema. And he's sitting next to me. He's telling me about every scene in Heat. And he's like, that scene where they're sitting in the diner. I'm like, Guzmano, how long did it take to shoot that? He's like, oh, that was like three days. You know, in an independent film, that would have been like six hours or seven hours or eight, you know, something like that. You know, with Michael Mann, that's like three days. So you have to have enough time to shoot your film because I believe if you walk away with nothing else from this, that time, lack of time, is the biggest enemy to creativity. You can't be creative if you're like have 10 scenes to shoot in one day, right? Like you can't give it your best. But um, like Jean-Pierre Genet, you know, who made Amelie, he is all about pre-visualization. That's doing everything you can to creatively map out your film before you make it. So I'm a strong believer in this. On our last film, my wife and I are co-directors. She acted in like all of the key scenes in this one particular film. 
we actually shot them on a phone and edited them. And so we knew the film that we were going to make before we made it. We knew all the problems. We knew what was great about it. And we just felt like we showed that to the, to the team. Like they all, before we made the film, they're like, oh, there's the edited scene. I get it. You know what I mean? The cinematographer was so confident, he knew exactly what to do, right? And Robert Rodriguez, does anyone know Robert Rodriguez? Yeah, he's a genius. Watch his video storyboards on YouTube. He is amazing. He's got like a whole 10 minute film school, by the way. But I just want to say, Robert Rodriguez, the more you map out what you're going to do with your film in production, the more successful you will be. I highly recommend. He's a monster. Serious. I highly recommend doing table reads, which is getting your actors around a table and reading that script. Has anyone done that? Yeah, cool. You're going to find out everything that's wrong with your movie right there, or not funny, or not impactful. And that's a great opportunity to make those changes right there. The first film Bayou and I ever made, Text Me, is viral on YouTube. You know, the actor went on to do a, a film with um, you know, Nickelodeon, a series on Nickelodeon. And then he was in the Sony Pictures film as a star uh, with Will Ferrell. Well, we basically shot that film like three times before we went to shoot that film. We just you know, shot it at a, you know, just shot the whole thing on a, on a you know, at that time it was like a camcorder, like a digital, high, uh, digital camcorder. So I really believe in testing and testing and testing. So um, these are some things that I really, really believe in from production. Um, I always ask myself, what are the assets, meaning like the valuable things on my project? Is it an actor? Like I just worked with Norman Reedus on a project that was helpful. Um, you know, from distribution and, and festivals. Um, but what are your assets? Is it, the, is it the acting in the film that's really the best? Is it the script that's really the best? Is it a location that you have that's really the best? Um, what is it? Like, you really got to figure out what your strengths are and really push those strengths. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay, cool. Um, all right, I'm going to come to the end here, but I always imagine everything that could go wrong on a film. And then I do everything I can so it doesn't go wrong, right? I'm like, what's, it gonna, what's, what's this scene going to be like if it rains? OK, good. Now what are we going to do if it does rain? You know, and then you know, whatever you got to do, it's like you overcome all those things that could go wrong. Um, and then um, I'm really big on insurances and permits. I'm really big on that, right? Um, you don't want to get shut down. You don't want to get fined. Um, you don't want to do like an underwater scene and you don't have underwater insurance and you're putting a camera underwater and something goes wrong. I just, I just say like avoid all of those problems. Insurance is really not that bad to get and permits are not really that bad to get. But when you don't have them, man, things suck. Things suck. They really do. So I highly recommend that. Um, be a professional. Don't just go at it like an unprofessional person. Like be a professional at anything you do, right? Okay. So. This is really important. You're, you're making this film. We said at the beginning of this talk that we want to make a film that's going to get distribution and is going to be profitable, right? That's our goal. And we're working backwards at all times from that. So I just want to say that a couple of really important things is that you know, as a filmmaker and producer, what you need to give your distributor. They want a horizontal poster and a vertical poster. They want subtitles. They want this and that. You better know what they want at the beginning and put that in your budget, right? OK. And then I really strongly, strongly believe in behind the scenes photographs and videos. Because remember, you make this film, right? We finished, we fin we've been working together as a team. We finished our film right now, OK? We have a year to three year minimum journey together after we just finished wrap we just wrapped our film after the edit okay we wrapped shooting now we have this journey ahead of us but these photographs these videos these behind the scenes allow us to continue to interest an audience does that make sense yeah. like did anyone see the, the movie roma yeah. yeah they if you looked at their instagram they just kept putting out photos kept putting out information kept interesting the audience. That's what's, what you need to do. So at this point, I'm going to end off on my talk. I just want to see if anyone has any questions. If anyone's interested in learning more, 
Um, I have a course called The Art of the Film Business that my wife and I put together with the Film Connection School. And you guys can definitely do this course. It'll give you all of this business side of filmmaking and make you very successful if you actually put it into action. OK. Did you guys get something out of that? Yeah. Right on, right on. Yo. Give a round of applause, please. Thank you. Should I take one question? Oh, I'll go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah distribution. Um, so like, do you think? Uh, just go straight to VOD at this point, like if you're gonna have a, like a smaller budget and don't worry about theatrical releases? Maybe Stephen can answer this better than I can, but I think theatrical is, is kind of like a losing financial proposition. I, I personally think that way. If you have a film that justifies theatrical, then great, but it has to make sense financially. You wanna make money, not lose money. But at the same time, if you do put your film in theaters, you know, it'll allow you to go to the top of the new releases, you know what I mean, and also get reviews and things like that. So it has huge benefits to go into theaters, but you need to think about it. Not every film should get theatrical, right? But I think if you really think this thing through, like are there like products in your film? Could it break into like a panel series? Could it become other things? Could it become a TV series? Like, you know what I mean? Build that into your project. It's called transmedia, okay? Thank you for that question. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you so so much. I love an enormous amount for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.